if we're going to really understand the Bible, we need to understand the culture and the customs in which the Bible was written. And we're going to take a look at what the Bible compares wisdom to. Uh, before we go there, though, I'd like to talk just a little bit about wisdom because it's something that is really underrated in our American society and something that, that you and I as Christians need to elevate. I'm not exactly sure the process by which wisdom kind of got left out of the picture when it comes to modern culture, but it definitely has been. If you think about the compliments, just think in terms of what you've heard on TV and on radio and in conversations about how people are complimented. You know, we take men and we compliment, you know, they're strong or, you know, they're accomplished or uh, they're cool. Or we talk about women and we talk about how beautiful they are. We, we compliment them in some other ways. When's the last time that you heard someone say, well, I just really look up to that person. They are really wise. When's the last time we've heard of wisdom as being something that should be extolled? Now, wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. In fact, I think our culture is making a, <laughs> our culture is majoring and bailing people out of problems that they have because they weren't wise. People reach retirement age and they haven't been wise enough to put money away or people eat whatever they want to for, for years and just ignore wise advice about what to eat or exercise. And sometimes in the Christian world, unfortunately, what happens is we ignore wisdom because we just say, oh, we'll just have faith. If we get sick, we'll just have faith to be healed. If we don't, if we don't have money, we'll just have, we'll have faith to get money. You know, is it really true that the Bible works that way? Does God really play one end against another? You know, if you study wisdom in the book of Proverbs, for example, and, and throw into that fool because the opposite, you know, the, you're either wise or you're a fool. By the time you study wisdom and foolishness in the book of Proverbs, you're looking at something like 200 occurrences in 31 chapters. You know how many times the word faith occurs in the book of Proverbs? None. What's God telling us here? Now, I don't want to come against the principle of faith, but if God tells us to be wise and, and tells us that if we're not wise, we'll eat the fruit of our ways, is he going to really undo all that? Yeah, just by, by simply the magic wand of faith, if you will? Christians need to think about wisdom more seriously. And again, this is a very detailed subject, and I don't want to break people's understanding of faith and how important faith is. But wisdom is important too. Wisdom is the, the proper uh, application of knowledge. And to apply knowledge takes discipline. It takes focus and discipline. Let's talk about wisdom, for example, about exercise. I, <laughs> I don't know anybody. Maybe there is somebody who just thinks that exercise is useless, that exercise wouldn't be good for their body. Okay, then we can agree that a wise thing to do would be to exercise. What's it take to do it? You see, we can know what to do, but wisdom is when we are actually acting out what we know to do. And what does the Bible say about wisdom? Here's what it says. This is Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 13. It says, Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for she is more profitable than silver. And it's important to understand that throughout the book of Proverbs, wisdom is portrayed as a woman. Um, that's the figure of speech personification, and God does it on purpose because we relate to people. <laughs> We're people, and we naturally relate to people. And so God in Proverbs portrays wisdom, by the way, and foolishness as well, as a woman. And so in verse 14 it says, For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. For she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Those are the words of God. Nothing you desire can compare with wisdom. That's pretty powerful. And by now you're probably saying to me, okay, John, that was great. Now where's the custom part come in? <laughs> and the answer is in the phrase, for she is more precious than rubies. Because 
you know, now that we've, we've studied the, the Hebrew language more completely and know it better than they knew it at the Reformation, say when the King James Version was translated or some of the other versions around that time, the Geneva Bible and such as that, um, and plus what the discipline of archaeology has shown us because we've now dug all over the Middle East uh, through thousands of years of history, is they didn't have rubies in Israel in biblical times. They, they didn't exist. And so, wait a minute, what's this word here? That wisdom is more precious than rubies. And here's a place where, in many cases, the translators have carried on a tradition, i.e. translating this Hebrew word rubies, because when you translate it, what it really is, you lose some of the impact. And this, this kind of thing puts the translators at a disadvantage. It's almost certain that the Hebrew word here translated rubies is coral. And it's a particular red coral that came in many cases, many times from the, uh, the Red Sea. And it was deeper than they could dive at that time period. So they couldn't just go down there and get it. Uh, but it had, you had to wait till there was a storm and some of it would, would come up on the seashore. And so it was a very rare uh, stone in the biblical world and, and gorgeous red orange. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the coral color from that part of the world, this absolutely stunning, deep uh, red uh, orange color. And, and so very, very highly valued in the biblical world. Unfortunately, now with scuba and you know, corals all over the world, um, it wouldn't be so highly valued. And, and this then puts the, puts the translator into a bind because the translator can say, well, wisdom is more profitable, <laughs> or the wisdom is more precious than coral. And somebody's going, well, that's not very precious. And so what do you do as a translator? Do you translate the Bible literally that, that wisdom is more precious than coral and then expect the reader to learn about coral in the biblical world? Or do you say, okay, all right, wait a minute. No, we get the point here that coral at that time was very precious. So today it's rubies and, and we're going to make it rubies. And this becomes really important when you start talking about women, like in Proverbs 31, where it says an, a wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. And, and you godly women are, uh, your worth is inexpressible. And so perhaps to say, well, you're worth more than coral, um, that might not give the, the best, uh, opinion, you know, the best representation of the text. Uh, I tend to fall on the literal end of the, of the spectrum. I, I tend to say, no, translate it as it is in the biblical text and let the educated Christian learn about the culture of the Bible. But other people disagree with me, obviously, and, and go a different way. So the scripture here is saying that wisdom is very, very precious. And I think you and I need to start looking around at people and asking ourselves the question, who is wise? And then asking ourselves, are we wise? And asking about what it's going to take for us to be wise and the discipline to get there. Because scripture can't be broken. The scripture is true. Wisdom is more profitable than silver, yields better return than gold, more precious than that gorgeous coral, and nothing we desire can compare with wisdom. Let's work hard to be wise for God. God bless.